Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back students. This is Dr. D for Science Beetle and Math 101. And we're doing multiplying decimal numbers today. And what, what I want to do today is just give you some examples of how you actually do the multiplication of some decimals and then incorporate uh, some of the lessons we learned last time, estimating. Okay, so just why don't we just go ahead and dive right in right now and take this example. Let's say we're going to do 3.25 and we're going to multiply this by 2.1. Well, when we set up this kind of problem, the first thing you got to do is remember there are two things to note at the very beginning. And you don't have to write them down anywhere, just note that uh, there is a decimal point that has one, two spaces in the first number, and in the second number there is one. So we have a total here of three decimal spaces. Okay? So what that means is that when we get to the answer, we've got to make sure that our final answer has the same number of decimal spaces. So let's go ahead and do the multiplication, and we begin by first multiplying 1 times 5. That will give us 5. And then 1 times 2 will give us 2. And 1 times 3 will give us 3. Then we proceed with the uh, 2 and multiply 2 times 5. And then since we moved in... To the second number, notice the placement of the number. The number here is in the ones position, so we essentially one to the left of the decimal. So we move, in our answer, move one in, and we begin here 10 with zero, and carrying the one up to the top. So two times two is four, times one, excuse me, two times two is four, plus one is five. So we bring down the five, and then two times three is six. And then we go ahead and add these two together. And when we do that, we bring down the numbers. So we've got 5, 2, 3 plus 5 is 8, and then we bring down the 6. Now our final answer has to make sure that we have the, th the same number of decimal spaces. So when we do that, we want to make sure that we put three decimal spaces. So we begin here at the very end, 1, 2, 3, and we put our decimal right there. That brings our overall answer to 6.825. So that's the way we do that using the long method. Now let me go ahead and erase the stuff over here on the right hand side and let's go ahead and try to do the estimated part. And so I'll make sure I make the line here and we'll label it so that we can see it properly. So we rewrite the problem 3.25 times 2.1 the first thing we want to do is go ahead and try to round these numbers. And so we look here, and I want to round this to the nearest one. And so if I'm doing that, that means that I want to round it to this number here for this, uh, for the to the 3.25 and to the 2 in 2.1. In order for me to round it properly, I need to look at the number next to it and ask the question, is this number greater, less than, or equal to 5? We know that 2 is definitely less than 5, so we cannot round it up, so we need to change all of these numbers to zeros. So these numbers then go turn into 3.00, and then we do the same thing for the 2.1, and we look at the 1. 1 is definitely not greater than 5, so the 1 gets turned into a 0, and that number there becomes a 2.0. Now when we do it this way and we multiply, now we can definitely do this kind of math extremely easy. 3 times 2 is going to be 6. Now the zeros don't count, but we know that we have at least 2, so we're going to have, or at least 3, so 2 on the top, 1 at the bottom, so 6.00 is our estimation. And so usually write down estimate. Now the one thing that I want to point out at this point for you is that when you compare this using the rounding and you compare that to the actual longhand, notice that there is a difference and it is significant in this case because if we go down here to the bottom uh, left corner, we notice that the number here, the 8, is definitely greater than eight, 5. And so if we were to round this number up, the number here would be rounded to 7.0, which is 1 totally more than the 6. And so that's the one thing you got to be careful about when you round. If you're rounding, make sure that you understand that you're rounding so that your final answer then uh, is reflected of that. But if you don't round, then you're, you're usually going to get the, the closest answer that you really want. 
but rounding just helps us get a, a general idea of what the number is without having to do all the math. All right, so hope that helps. Catch us next time, and we'll see you soon.